All right, so magic of video. I have the optic assembly back out after we saw that it still had the, uh, the spot on that upper section. Now I'm going to dig, really dig in to the optic assembly here and possibly even the lens itself, but we're going to take the color wheel assembly off because I don't want to accidentally crack it or something. So I'm going to take this, take that off and then take out the screw here. So I just, I don't want anything to happen to the color wheel or the cable. So I'm gonna put that away somewhere safe, set it over here on some foam, put that over there too. Now, if you're working on your projector, you don't necessarily have to do that. <clears throat> I'm just doing that because it, uh, you know, I don't wanna accidentally push on it or something. I'm gonna be moving it around on camera and all that stuff. So we did look at the DMD. That looked pretty clean. Uh, so I suspect it's on one of the other pieces of glass, possibly on that lens right here. I don't see anything obvious, but we're going to look for something obvious. It's going to be in the uh, 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock position, depending on where in the optical path it is, because like stuff flips over because of lens reasons. Uh... That's curious. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way. I kind of thought that was supposed to be underneath. Hmm. Maybe not, though. I haven't taken that out, and it doesn't look like anybody else has taken it out. And those screws for adjusting the light tunnel. That screw there doesn't look like it's been removed, nor that one. So we're just gonna leave the light tunnel area alone. However, if you need to do a quick basic cleaning of your projector, of your optic assembly for the uh, HT2050 or HT2050A or HT2150, there's a little access point in the top don't think we have to take the lens adjuster off. I believe as long as you can get to this screw, we take that screw out. This should be a little flap that comes up. Let's get some, uh, let's get some tweezers under it. There we go. So see, it's a little metal cover that goes over this hole. I don't know what that's really for. I don't know if that's really for cleaning or for some alignment process they do in the factory or what. But you can see it gives us access to everything. There's the DMD in the back there. And then there's just all, you can see the lenses and mirrors. There's the mirror right there. So what you could do, you take that off. Now this is kind of hacky, but it might do the trick. Then get your air source. I'm using this little puffer fella. And then And that should hopefully blow anything out. I don't think I would use canned air here. This stuff, I don't think I'd use this stuff because uh, it'll get cold and it may cause moisture buildup in there. So try to stick with dry air if you're good or comfortable with the uh, canned air and know how to keep it from turning into freeze spray. You could try it, but just to be safe, I'm going to say don't use canned air for this sort of thing. Uh, then you can try it, you know, because you haven't really taken it all the way apart. You can kind of do this when it's still in the projector. Because with everything back in place, even with the metal frame, I 
think you still have access to that screw right there. Let's see. Let's see if the metal frame blocks access to that screw. We probably could have looked while I had it in the projector. No. So you can still get to that screw. It would be right here. So even with the frame and main board in, you can get, pardon me, you can get to that. So that means that you could really do this with it all still installed in the projector. I just have it out for demonstration purposes and because, you know, we got to get into the rest of it for the problem this thing's having. And then when you put the cover back on, just make sure that little hole lines up with the pin. You know, just, just reverse your disassembly. And then we put that screw back in. So now what I want to do, I was thinking about taking this whole lens assembly off, because if you remember, we had a spot in the middle. See, I don't see anything obvious. Let me shine a... Let's shine my flashlight in through the light tunnel. Let's see if we see anything... So what you're seeing there, that's the DMD. There's the corner of it. Now we're going back across the top. Where's the other corner? Almost there. There's the other corner. I don't know if that little red mark we see is what I'm seeing on the screen, but I kind of think it might be. A little red thing over my finger. And what's crazy is I can really only see it clearly in the camera. In person, it's not very obvious. Oh, wait, actually it kind of is. Yeah, see it there? Those little two lines? My little flashlight. See I'm making a circle around it there. I think that might be it. And that looks like it's inside the lens. Alright, let's take the lens assembly off. And we'll take the screws out of the out of the zoom, the zoom lever here. I actually set up a, a pseudo clean room for this. I, um, not really a clean room. I set some fans up to keep air moving so I don't have dust settling. It's a couple old projector fans. So the, uh, the focus ring just pops off. It just pulls straight. It's got three little catches for those nubs on the lens. So let me just put that back in. Okay, so I'm feeling a little stupid all of a sudden. Those lines, those are a reflection of the uh, fluorescent lights above me, so it's not that. So I guess we're kind of back to the drawing board. I still want to look at the lens assembly, so let's keep going with disassembly. I feel a little silly. I don't know if you guys can see the, the red line. Let me see if I can... Yep, see I'm putting my hand... That's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's not a big deal. I just feel kind of silly. So now, these three screws come out, and these actually hold the lens assembly. Now, they do have these little rubber washer things. They go over the screw. Just kind of keep them together. I think their job is just to kind of give the uh, adjustment some resistance and so it can slide. All right, so, let me, so let me just get these screws dealt with. I'm probably not even in frame. No, of course not. So I just want to make sure I have these screws ready so that 
when I go to put everything back together, the uh, rubber is already in the spot. This is what I'm talking about. They have this little rubber, that little rubber thing there. So you don't want to lose that. It'll work without it, but you know, you probably want it to be right and not drop it on the bench like that. All right, and then we have those two. We'll put that, those out of the way. Then the last thing we need to do is release the adjuster here. And then these two screws are also the rails that the lens runs up and down on. Get to using a little bit of silicone grease there. Be careful. No? Still more? Yep can't remember if those small screws go into the case body or not, or if they just are holding into the plastic. Yeah, they're going into the case too. So really all these screws on the top have to come out. And then, oh yeah, they're long. Okay. So they are going into the case body. It's been a while since I've taken one of these apart. The, uh, the lens assembly at least. There we go. That's the lens adjuster. Come on. Just kind of catching itself here. There's a little there's a lip right there. We gotta clear that. See there's a uh, this is threaded. It goes into a threaded thing. There we are. See. It goes into that and then that lifts it up and down. And then here's our lens. Let's see if the camera sees anything, because I am not seeing anything at all that makes me think there's a problem here. That actually looks really good. You can see the uh, lights reflecting a lot easier now. So I don't think it's in here. Now we're inside. So my suspicion is the shape lens, crud on the DMD, or, I don't know, that's all I got right now. Let's see. Yeah, the DMD looks fine. I think we might have to take the lower cover off. You know, there could be an issue in the light tunnel. We'll address that last, though. Next thing we're going to do is take this piece off. There's a few screws holding that on. It's just a plastic assembly that holds the uh, lenses and mirrors. And if nothing's obvious. I mean, it doesn't take much to cause this, so if there's nothing obvious, what we'll probably do is do like a, I don't know, for lack of a better term, a blind cleaning, where we'll just clean everything that we see. It's kind of a shotgun repair, but I think that might be okay in this case. It's not like we're loading the parts cannon. We're just looking at the, we're just going to, you know, clean everything. So there's three, and then I think that's it. We got that third one. Let's see. There must
must be another screw hidden under this corner. No? Just a lot of tape, probably. You get a little something to uh, get a little bit of leverage under it. All right, so it's just the, the stickiness from the tape. And that, that foam. Let's get all that stuff disconnected. There we are. There we go. All right. So that's one of the screws. So that's the shape lens. And I do see me, and then I also see some dust and me again, but not much, not much else. The uh, this lens, looks okay, I'll probably clean it. And then we have, let's see, this mirror. So the light comes in through here, hits that mirror, off of that mirror to the shape mirror, from the shape mirror to the DMD, and then out to the lens. And there's the DMD. Hmm. Again, nothing looks obvious. There's the uh, the cover. Oops. That's that little cover we took off right there. I'm just going to shine in through the uh, light tunnel a little bit. And you know what I see... I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a tiny, there's something on the end. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see that right there? That little hair? I'll bet you that's what it is. I'll bet you that's it. Let me get a cotton swab to clean that off. All right, so let's uh, just get right there. So this actually uses an integrator rod rather than a light tunnel. Uh, the difference, at least for me, is that an integrator is... Um, no, wait, no, I'm sorry. Maybe this is a light tunnel. No, that's an integrator. A light tunnel is four pieces of glass that all uh, four, pe four mirrors rather that all face each other for surface mirrors like this this is what I would call a light tunnel it is hollow in the center it's hollow in the center as you can see and then there's mirrors and then they all reflect the light and then give you a nice, solid, coherent beam. This seems to be an integrator? No? No, this is also a light tunnel? It's just that clean. Okay. An integrator would be solid. There'd be no... Uh, it would not be hollow. The mirrors are just so clean here that it looked like there was a solid on the end. And uh, a lot of projectors do use that. Um, you'll see them referred to as integrator rods. Panasonic um, is one that comes to mind that I know has that. And now, just that quick little tap with the uh, cotton swab looked like it was enough to get that off. In fact, just to be extra sure, let's get my little puffer. 
that clean and then I should have set my little fan system up again that was kind of nice Slide this back on. It's one of the reasons I leave all the foam and stuff in place is it helps with shoving this back together. Everything lines itself back up pretty easily, so I'm not too concerned. We'll put our three screws back in. This one, and let's give it one more. Then we'll get our lens. Now the optic assembly is sealed, so hopefully dust won't drop in. We'll get those screws with the rubber washer that I knocked off again. One. Two. Oops. The uh, rubber past the screw, which is wrong. All right, they're in. There's really not a ton of translation. It's just a, uh, it's just a little up and down. Like very little up and down. So let's put this back in. Yep, come on. Use that, screw it back in. And then once we get the uh, optic assembly reassembled, I will do some movie magic and get this back in and ready for testing. I am optimistic. If the light tunnel did have a piece hanging in the end like that, that would be enough to cast enough of a shadow to cause what we were seeing. So... I have, uh, I do have high hopes. I'm not 100% positive it's the fix, but it won't surprise me if it is. I'll be uh, pleasantly happy. All right, so that's back in. That's the adjuster down. Up, down, up. Right, I'm just going to put it about in the middle. That works. All right, then next, this guy.
So there we are. All snapped back together. Then get my color wheel. Let's get that out of the foam. That's good. You can see we have a good overlap of the light tunnel, so we have no issues there. That looks good. That looks good. And let's put the metal piece back on that allows us to attach the uh, lamp. Go. And then the screw. And the screw. All right. So the uh, optical assembly is reassembled now. Let's go back in the projector and get ready to test it. All right, magic, blah, blah, it's all back together. Now, let's see what happens. Move the uh, cover out of the way because this is actually looking pretty good. There's definitely, yeah, there's definitely light bleed. But I think I got that. Oh, you guys can't see squat. There we go. Let's see. Menu. Let's go to a test pattern. Oops. Or is this it? There we are. I think we got it. The, um, yeah, this stuff, that, that's all light bleed from, you know, not having the case on. So this is good. Um, we're going to shut it down and we're going to set the cover back on before I actually hook a signal up to it. And let's see for sure as it shuts down, I still don't see anything. Um, with the cover on we'll be able to see and I'll try it on the large screen so we get some you know distance out of it be right back all right so we are now over in the long throw area and um, I am projecting up on the wall and there we go we are now in the one screen now that little black right there that is not the projector that's something in the room casting a shadow i would expect to see a little fogginess haziness right there and i don't see it so let's go to the menu and then still looks good to the test pattern That looks good. I, um, I gotta hold the back. I don't have the screws in. There we go. Now I moved away from the, uh, that little shot. All right, so I'm back. And here is the, my Raspberry Pi. Let me, oh wait, I'm gonna go in here, not there. I accidentally started the internet up and this is not a very fast pie and I don't have it plugged into the network. So, 
and see if I can. Ah, I can. Wonderful. Don't need that. Close that. Okay, so here is a white 1080 picture. That's what I wanted to look at. Let's tilt it down a little bit. This is kind of a wider throw projector, so let's get it on that screen. I'll move you guys so you can see it a little more. And there is no mark in the middle. I do see like a weird shadow thing in the screen right here, but it's the screen because if I go like this, it stays in the same spot. And then I saw a little black spot in the camera and I realized that's just the, uh, the arrow. So I think I got it. In fact, I'm very sure I got it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run that video and as long as that video works out volume all the way down so I don't get any copyright issues I'm gonna run this movie and uh, you know a couple hours as long as it, nothing shuts down it'll be good I'm sure it'll be fine the issue was that little spot in the middle so I don't see it coming back just from watching a movie but this is part of my final checkout process so, if you have any questions about your BenQ, whether it be a uh, HT 2050A, uh, HT 2050, HT 2150, or any of the other myriad of BenQ models out there, go ahead and stick it down in the comments. I'll leave some information in the description. Wow, look at all that dust. This is just in the room. That's why I use the fan blowing the air across while I work on it. But anyway, like I said, um, any questions you have, put it down in the comments. Check the description for information on a replacement lamp for this projector and any other info I may have talked about during the video. And uh, if you don't already subscribe, think about clicking the subscribe button. Hopefully it's over there. Um, if you don't, that's fine. I just like to remind people, hit the like button too. I don't I hate saying that, but it does work. So hit the like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, and as always, thank you for watching.